Hollywood, California, Monday, January 4th. The Lux Radio Theater presents Spencer Tracy, Virginia Bruce, and Francis Farmer in Men in White with Frank Riker and Paul Guilfoyle. Lux presents Hollywood. Our stars, Spencer Tracy, Virginia Bruce, Francis Farmer, Frank Riker, and Paul Guilfoyle. Our guests, Dr. Frank G. Heiser, distinguished physician and author of An American Doctor's Odyssey, and Miss Edith Head, motion picture dress designer. Our producer, Cecil B. DeMille, whose picture, The Plainsman, is playing this week in principal cities throughout the country. Our conductor, Louis Silvers. The makers of Lux Lakes greet you with best wishes for the new year and a cordial invitation to be with us each Monday night through 1937. Welcome, everyone. How many times have you asked yourself this question? How can I dress smartly on a limited budget? Well, here's an answer in just two words. Lux Flakes. These gentle, effective soap flakes, free of harmful alkali, keep your washables looking fresh and just like new so much longer. Don't forget, anything safe in water alone is safe in Lux, the economical way of dressing smartly. And now, the producer of the Lux Radio Theater, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Milwaukee, founded by the Indians, was discovered by the French and is noted for its Germans. But one of the natives of which the city is most proud is an Irish-American named Spencer Tracy. Six years ago, while Spencer was playing the lead in the last mile on the New York stage, Clark Gable, then not as well known as Tracy, was playing it on the road. For both men, the last mile was the last lap in a race for Hollywood. But it wasn't until about a year ago that Spencer gained full recognition. And now, while hard at work in the MGM production Captain's Courageous, he is being mentioned as an outstanding candidate for the 1936 award of the Motion Picture Academy. Virginia Bruce and Francis Farmer are both renowned for their loveliness and their voices. Virginia was about to enroll in the University of California at Los Angeles when director William Bodine enrolled her instead at Fox Studios. Broadway then reversed the usual order, took Virginia from films, and made her a showgirl in two Ziegfeld productions. Returning as an MGM star, her latest picture is Born to Dance. Frances Farmer is that handsome young lady from Seattle who is probably the screen's outstanding find of 1936. Not long ago, this paramount discovery returned to Seattle to see herself in her recent picture, Come and Get It. It was shown at the same theater in which she once worked as an usher, earning part of the money which put her through the University of Washington. Tonight she is heard as Barbara Denon, Virginia Bruce as Lara Hudson, and Spencer Tracy as Dr. George Ferguson. Frank Riker plays Dr. Hochberg, and Paul Guilfoyle, Dr. Levine. And the Lux Radio Theater... Bills all five in Sidney Kingsley's Pulitzer Prize play, Men in White. We're in the softly lighted chapel of a medical school in New York. It's near the finish of the graduation ceremony in which a score of hopeful young physicians are to receive the reward of their years of study. Among the graduates is George Ferguson, high in his class and higher in the estimation of his instructors. He stands with his fellow students as they recite the words of the Hippocratic Oath, an oath to which physicians have bound themselves since the days of ancient Greece. I do solemnly swear by what I hold most sacred in my life, to be forever loyal to the profession of medicine and just and generous to its members, to lead my life and practice my art in uprightness and honor, to hold 
myself aloof from all voluntary wrong and corruption, I do swear that I will give no deadly drug, even if solicited, that whatsoever I shall see or hear of the lives of men, which is not fitting to be spoken, I will keep inviolably secret. These things do I swear. And now, if you be true to this, your oath, may prosperity and good repute be ever yours. The opposite, if you shall prove yourselves forsworn. Gentlemen, doctors, I greet you in the name of medicine. Ferguson. Oh, Ferguson. Yes, Dr. Huckberg. Congratulations, my boy. Thank you, doctor. I don't mind telling you it feels pretty good. <laughs> I know. Well, you're going into St. George's Hospital for your internship. You mean you fixed it for me? It didn't take any fixing, my boy. They want you there. So do I. Now, you'll work for me for a year if you want to. If I want to. I'm the luckiest man in the world. Oh, thanks. <laughs> well, then a year or so in Vienna with von Eiselberg. You haven't changed your mind about that? Oh, no. I'm still going to go if I can manage it. Good. Good. Well, what about Laura? Does she know George? Oh, sure. Why, Dr. Huckberg? Oh, nothing. I, I just wondered. Oh, yes. Yes, I know what you mean. No, Laura's all right. She understands. It'll be a long time yet before you're ready to practice. I've told her that. We've been over the whole thing a dozen times. I'm glad. Laura's a fine girl, George, but, well, I wouldn't want anything to interfere with your studies. I know. I have plenty to learn yet. Plenty to read. Whole libraries full. I'm looking forward to it, and so is she. Fine. I like to hear you talk like that. It leads me to expect big things of you. Hello, St. George's Hospital. One moment, please. St. George's Hospital? Who? One moment, please. I'll see if I can reach him. Hello, Miss Sharp. Will you try to reach Dr. Ferguson on the call system, please? On the call system. He's not in his office. Thank you. Hello? One moment, please. St. George's Hospital. Dr. Ferguson. Dr. Ferguson. Dr. Ferguson. Dr. Ferguson. Hello? Ferguson talking. Hello? Ferguson talking. Yes. <laughs> Who? Oh, I see. Why, uh, ask him to come in sometime this afternoon. Hello, switchboard. I'm in the library. Be here for about ten minutes. Right. Oh, George. Yes, Dr. Hochberg. George, I want you to meet Dr. Levine, Dr. Ferguson. How do you do, Doctor? How do you do? Uh, Dr. Levine has brought some x-ray plates, both lungs. Will you take a look, George? Hmm. That shadow there. The right apex. Yes, I was afraid of that. Oh, don't be in alarm, Miss Levine. Have you examined this putum? I brought a specimen. My, uh, my microscope is broken. Well, we'll look at it here. You take it, George. Certainly. I'll have the path lab check up on this. Is it anything important? My, uh, my wife. Oh. I'll attend to it at once, Doctor. Thanks. Do you think if I came back this evening... Oh, sure, yes. The report will be ready then. Drop into my room, 106. 106? <laughs> That's my old room. You interned here? Are you the Levine... Why, of course, Sure. Bellevue, aren't you? Yes, 23. Yes. Professor Dury mentioned you quite often. Dury? He still remembers me? Oh, he thinks a great deal of you. George here is one of his prize pupils, too. Been here nine months. Our house surgeon. House surgeon? Oh, that's fine. I was house surgeon, too. Yes, I heard. You're going to study abroad, Dr. Ferguson? I hope so. I planned to study with Sauerbrook in Germany. But, uh, I couldn't get there. Uh, where are you going? To Vienna. I'm going with von Eiselberg. And a wife along to keep him company. <laughs> oh, you're... You're going to be married? Yes, it'll be a honeymoon trip. You'll find it difficult mixing the two. I know Van Eiselberg. It's going to be very difficult. You don't know Laura. <laughs> and after a year in Vienna, I'm working with Dr. Hochberg. <laughs> so, you see, the real labor won't begin till I come back from Europe. Oh, I'll drive you, George, with a whip, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Lucky. Yes, I once looked forward to all that. Well, uh, come on, Levine. We'll go down to X-ray and read these pictures properly. And don't worry about the specimen, Doctor. Thanks, thanks. Remember, there's only one Hochberg. 
Every minute with him is precious. I know that. Goodbye, Doctor. See you tonight. Dr. Ramsey. Dr. Ramsey. Hey, George. Dr. Ramsey. Yes, Shorty. Who Dr. was that? Ramsey. Max Levine? Yeah. Dr. I heard of him. He was headed to be a big shot around here. Yes. Looks like he doesn't own a dime right now. Whatever happened to him, do you know? He... Oh, what's the difference? Ferguson. Yes, Doctor. I just saw 401. It's a mighty sick boy. May need another transfusion. We'll have to go pretty deep to find a good vein, Dr. Gordon. That's just what I'm worried about. If it comes up, up tonight, I want you to be here to do it. Tonight? Yes, the three donors on call. Well, this is my night out, and my fiancé has made arrangements. I'm afraid I won't be here. I'm sorry, Ferguson. When the house needs well, you... Well, I'd like to, Doctor, but the same thing happened last week. I, I can't disappoint my fiancé again, or I won't have any. Uh, Dr. Gordon, couldn't I do that transfusion? I'm afraid not. Ferguson has followed the case from the start. He knows the veins we've used. Well, what do you say, Ferguson? All right, I'll stay. Thanks. See me in my office about eight. One night a week off, and it's... It's tough, George. Sorry, I couldn't help you out. Dr. Ferguson. Dr. Ferguson. Dr. Ferguson. Hello. Oh, oh, hello, Laura. No, 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 it's all right. Where are you, upstairs? How's your father? All right, I'll be right... Right up, yeah. Dr. Ferguson, where's Dr. Ferguson? See you later. Here, what is it? Oh, Dr. Ferguson, a woman just came in on emergency with a lacerated throat. She's bleeding terribly. Dr. Crane told me to tell her that he can't stop it. Get her up to the operating room quick. Yes, sir. On your toes, Shorty, get everything ready. Right. Mac, McDonald, right here. locate the staff anesthetist. Operating room B and on the run. It's emergency. Come on, now, go on. <laughs> Never felt better in my life. Sure, you feel fine. That's why I want you in here for another week. Rest that heart of yours. Hockey's right, Dad. You ought to stay. Now, don't you start, Laura. Oh, but it's so foolish. I have an important deal on, honey. Biggest deal in years. A lot of money, John? Yes, a lot of money. And what good will it do you if you don't live to enjoy it? Hmm. Well, it can still buy my little girl a honeymoon. I could spend my honeymoon right here and have a swell time, as long as it's with George. By the way, where is that man, Hockey? Upstairs, busy. Oh, well, can I get him on the phone again? Better wait, he's in the operating room. Oh. Yeah, they make a slave of that boy, and he doesn't get a dime. I can't see it. Well, he's not here for the money. He's here to learn. If he wanted to make money, he wouldn't have chosen medicine in the first place. You know, when he comes with me, his pay is only going to be $20 a week. But there's a chance to work. The next five years are crucial years in that boy's life. They're going to tell whether he becomes an important man or not. George is an important man right now, Hockey. To me. To you. I... Well, don't I count? Of course you do, dear. Hello. George. How are you, darling? Hello, Mr. Hudson. How are you, George? Come to take my temperature, I suppose, huh? No, no, not this time. Why so glum, dear? Toothache? No, oh, just tired, I guess. Excuse me, please. What is it, Miss Jemison? Time for Mr. Hudson's sunbath. Oh, go away. Uh, come along now, come along. Let go, let go. I got some phone calls. See you later, Laura. All right, Hockey. Bye, Dad. Goodbye. <laughs> darling. Oh, Laura, you're lovely today. Kiss me, darling. Oh, how I've missed you these last few weeks. I've been busy, dear. I know. And there'll be three more months of it, won't there? Three months. I don't know how I can live till then. There'll be long months for me, too. You know, George, you've spoiled everything for me. What? Oh, I don't seem to get a kick out of life anymore unless you're around. That's not very often, is it? Darling, we'll make up for it all later on, honestly. I don't know if we can. You see, dearest, the way I feel, if I had you every minute from now on, it wouldn't be enough. I wish I'd lived all my life with you. I wish I'd been born in the same room with you and played in the same streets. I'm glad you missed them. They were ordinary and gloomy. They might have touched you, changed you. Look at me, Laura. About seven months ago, there was a boy here who had been blind from birth. We operated on him successfully. One night, I showed him the stars for the first time. He looked at them a moment and began to cry like a baby because he said they were so beautiful. And he might never have seen them. And when I look at you, Laura, I, I get something of that feeling. I, I can't tell you how large a part of me you've become, Laura. Dr. Ferguson. Dr. Ferguson. Oh, Dr. Ferguson. Oh, no. It's Dr. no use, Laura. That's my call. Dr. I've got Ferguson. to answer. No. Let me Dr. go, Ferguson. please, darling. Oh, you spoiled Dr. Ferguson. 
Dr. Ferguson. Yes. Oh, oh, yes, doctor. I'll, I'll be ready. I'll tend to all that. Right. All right. Go on. Go to work. I won't be needed for half an hour yet. Well, I have to go to my hairdressers and make myself beautiful for tonight anyway. Laura, dear, What I... a night we're going to have. Doris asked us over there, but I want you to myself. Laura, I've, uh, I've got some bad news. Now, you won't be upset, will you? What is it? I, I can't make it tonight. I have to stay in. Again? Don, I'm so sorry. I, I tried to duck out of it, but I couldn't. There's a transfusion I have to do. What time is it? I'll wait. No, you better not. It depends on the patient. I've just got to be around and ready. Are you the only one here who can do that transfusion? Well, Dr. Gordon seems to think so. George, they're overworking you, and it's not fair. Oh, I don't mind it so much for myself, only... No. Well, I do. I was planning so much on tonight. Well, don't you think I was, Laura? All week I've been looking forward to it. Yes, I know. George, I'm so low. What's our life going to be like? Well, pretty grand, I should say. How can it be? How can it? Oh, dear. Now, we'll go out tomorrow instead. Uh, Saturday's more fun anyway. Well, it's not just tonight. It's all the night. Darling, you're exaggerating now. No, I'm not. Well, what do you expect me to do? I want to get out. I want to enjoy myself. But I can't. That's all I can't. George, I know this is important to you. And if it's going to help you, I can go on like this for another three months. For another year and three months. But when we come back to New York, let's arrange our lives like human beings. Well, you could open up an office and have regular hours, special hours. Well, if I work with Hockberg, darling, I won't have the time to go into practice. That's just it. I know hockey. I'll never see you then. But, Laura... Oh, darling, I've, I've plugged all my life just in the hope that someday I'd have a chance to work with a man like Hockberg. Why? Well, I couldn't go on this way. I just couldn't. I'd rather break off now and try to forget you. Laura, don't say a thing like well, that. I mean it. It would kill me, but I'd rather die quickly than by slow torture. Dr. Ferguson. Dr. Ferguson. They're calling Dr. you. Dr. Ferguson. Yeah, I know. Dr. Ferguson. Ferguson talking. Yes. Who? South 218? We'll call Dr. Cunningham. It's his case. What? When? What's her temperature? Pulse. Did she ask for food before she became unconscious? No. No more insulin. Absolutely. I'll be right down. No, I, I have to go now, Laura. Please, please don't worry. <laughs> Laura, I'm speaking to you. <laughs> Oh, as bad as that? Yes. Well, things will straighten themselves out. No, they won't. I'll see you tomorrow night, dear. Right? Yes, but think it over, George. We'll have to come to some decision. Oh, Laura, will you please? I mean it, absolutely. All right, Laura. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Spencer Tracy, Virginia Bruce, and Francis Farmer continue in a moment with Men in White. Meanwhile, we'll stroll down Sunset Boulevard. We might see a movie star, too. Oh, I say, there goes a stunning girl driving that dream car. Maybe she's an actress. Oh, oh, she passed the red light. And there goes the officer's whistle. Sure, lady, and would you be going to a fire, perhaps? Or do you think you're one of them movie stars? Oh, no, I, I'm on my way to your tea party, officer. But look, as I put my foot on the brake, I popped a run. And it upset me, so I just forgot to stop, that's all. Oh, lady, and that's a fine story, but it's not a new one. My wife used to plague me with it. Before she got on to Lux Flakes, of course. And did Lux cut down her run? Sure, lady, and doesn't everybody know Lux saves the elasticity in silk? Keeps you from getting runs? Sure he's the strain on me pocketbook, too. Oh, thank you, officer, for telling me about it. Well, I'll be letting you go this time, but I know you'll get a good bit of punishment going to that tea fight with a run in your stocking. The officer is right. A girl certainly hates being seen with a run, and there's nothing a man dislikes more than having his best girl show up with one. Getting too frequent runs is something a clever girl avoids. She makes it a rule to luck stockings after each wearing. Lux saves stocking elasticity. And with Lux, there is no injurious cake soap rubbing. Then threads can give under strain without always popping embarrassing runs. Lux flakes have no harmful alkali, you know, to weaken fibers, rob them of elasticity. If you aren't already using Lux flakes for stockings, better make a note to get some tomorrow. It saves you runs, saves you money. And now, here's Mr. DeMille. We continue Men in White, starring Spencer Tracy, Virginia Bruce, and Francis Farmer. It's a few minutes later, 
In room 218 South, a little girl lies unconscious in her bed. Watching her with anxious eyes are Ferguson, Dr. Cunningham, and the nurse, Barbara Denon. Ferguson straightens up suddenly and turns to the older physician. I was afraid of shock, Dr. Cunningham. This isn't shock, young man. It's diabetic coma. Coma? How's her temperature, nurse? It's abnormal, doctor. There, you see, sir? Well, what of it? Nurse, prepare some insulin. 40 units. I, I beg your pardon, doctor, but isn't insulin contraindicated here? No, it's our last chance. Uh, doctor, I, I mean no offense, but I've studied this case history. It looks like shock, not coma. Suppose you let me handle this case, young man. Prepare that arm, nurse. What? Yes, sir. No, no. Please, doctor, call in one of the other men. Ask them, anybody. There's no time. That insulin's going to prove fatal. Get out of here, will you? I don't want any interruption while I'm treating my patient. Give me that hypo. I say no. Get away from that patient. Here. What are you doing? Take your hands off. Stand over there and don't bother me. Nurse, shock position, quick. Yes, sir. Floor nurse. Yes, sir. Sterile glucose, quick, and a hypo of adrenaline. There's glucose here, sir, already. How much? 50 grams. Good, half it'll do. Apply the tourniquet, right arm. Nurse, nurse, some hot packs and blankets. Yes, sir. Quick, come on, I'll hurry. What do you think you're doing? I'll have you brought up before the medical board. I'll have you thrown out of this hospital. You can't. All right, all right. Have me thrown out. I don't care. But you're not going to kill this baby. I've never heard of such a thing, right? You ready, nurse? You yes, sir. Let's have the glucose. Swab that arm. Never mind the iodine, just alcohol. You'll pay for this, young man. That patient's life is in your hands. I think it's in hot packs, doctor. Yes, cover her up. Hot packs all around her. I help over adrenaline is already, doctor. Give it to me. All right. Now, that's about all we can do. You report downstairs, Ferguson. At once. I'm sorry, I've got to stay with this baby. Did you hear what I said? Dr. Ferguson, she's opening her eyes. Keep those blankets on her. Dr. George. Yes, dear. I'm, I'm thirsty. I want a drink. You bet, sweetheart. Water. Yes, sir. Dr. George. Here. Here you are, darling. Drink this. What happened? Nothing. Nothing, dear. You, you just fell asleep, that's all. Come on, now. Bottoms up. There, yeah, that girl. Dr. George... My operation hurts me here. Oh, now, now. We'll we'll fix that up in a minute. Doctor? Morphine, the twelfth. Get it, nurse. Yes, sir. I'll report you, of course. A meddling young puppy. However, under the circumstances, I guess I can afford to be lenient this time. But if you ever dare interfere again in any of my cases... I wouldn't think of it, doctor. Hmm. See that you don't. Well, now, young lady, how about getting some sleep? Okay, Dr. George. Close your eyes. All right, but don't you go away. No, no, I'll, I'll be right here. Go on now, close your eyes. Here's the morphine, Doctor. Shh. She won't need it. Yes, sir. Did, did Dr. Cunningham say anything to you? No. Pretty kid, isn't she? I was scared we were going to lose her. She has hair like Laura's. What, Doctor? Oh, nothing, nothing. I think it was wonderful of you to stand up against Dr. Cunningham. Never mind right. that. You better clean up that mess. Yes, sir. Here. What's the matter with you? I'm sorry. I'm just nervous, I guess. Yeah. Cunningham been treating you, too? No, sir. This is my first case with a sick child, and I got to like her an awful lot. Oh, I see. What's your name? Barbara Denon. You're going to be a swell nurse, Barbara. Thanks. Now, take my advice. I know just how you feel. Your nerves are all tied up in a knot. You want to yell. Well, I feel the same way myself. Get as far away from here as you can tonight. Have a good time. Relax. Forget the hospital. Tomorrow you'll be all right. I can't. I have an exam in Materia Medica tomorrow. Materia Medica? Well, I, th I think maybe I have some notes that might help you. I'll leave them with the orderly on the first floor. You can get them on your way down. Thanks. They may help you a bit. You won't have to cram all night anyway. Dr. Ferguson. Dr. Ferguson. They're calling you, sir. Yeah. Dr. Ferguson. Are you on Dr. duty Ferguson. here now? For a while. Dr. Ferguson. If she wakes with any pain, Dr. give her that hypo. Ferguson. If her temperature Dr. goes below Ferguson. normal, call me. I'll be in. Dr. Ferguson. Tonight, Dr. too? Ferguson. Yes, tonight, too. Dr. Ferguson. Dr. Ferguson. All right, all Dr. right. Ferguson. I'm coming. Shut up. Dr. Ferguson. <laughs> Hello? I'm trying to get Atwater 90032. Hello? Hello?
Hello, Laura. How are you, dear? Feeling better? Well, well, uh, look, dear, I can make it tonight after all. What? Oh, oh, don't be silly. But, darling, we'll, we'll work that out. Now, listen, Laura, that chance to work with Hawkberg is one of the best breaks I've ever had. You don't expect me to throw it over like that at a moment's notice? No, no, darling, I, I don't want to even talk about it tonight. I'm tired, Laura. It's been a rotten day. Three operations. I, I just can't think. I can't make an important decision tonight. But... Oh, Laura. What are you doing? Punishing me? All right, then I'll call you tomorrow. Come in. Oh, good evening. I'm, I'm sorry if I disturbed you. Oh, no, no, no. Come on in, Dr. Levine. Thanks, dear. Did you get that lab report on my wife? I'll see if it's ready. Hello? Pat lab, please. Sit down, won't you, Doctor? Thanks. Hello, Dr. Finn Ferguson. Uh, what about that sputum? Oh, it's under the microscope now. All right, Dr. Finn, hurry it through, will you? Thank you. It'll just be a few minutes. I hope it's nothing. Poor Catherine. She's had so much. Things were so different when I was here. Before I married. Yes, Professor Dury told me. Dury. Oh, I know just what he says. Levine, the fool. Wealthy mother. Chance to work with Hochberg. To be somebody. Threw it all away for a pretty face. Your mother? She hasn't come around to your way yet? No. When I married Catherine, my mother disowned me. It must have broken her heart. But still, she was doing the right thing from her point of view. Poor Catherine. I didn't count on that. East side, tenements, 50 cent patients, poverty, dirt, struggle, and human sacrifice. Medicine. Why do we kill ourselves for it? I don't know. I often wonder myself whether it was worth the grind working my way through college and med school. Med school, too? Oh, yes. I don't see how you kept up with classes. Ah, I managed. Terrific grind. Well, it wasn't much fun, but still, I guess it's the only thing I really want to do. My father used to say... Above all is humanity. He was a fine man, my father. A small-town physician, upstate. When I was about 13, he came to my room one night and apologized because he was going to die. His heart had gone bad on him. And he knew that if he gave up medicine and took it easy, he could live for 20 years. But he wanted to go right on. Wanted to die in the harness. And he did. Above all else is humanity. That's a big thought. Yeah, it's so big that alongside of it, you and I really don't matter very much. That's why we do it, I guess. You're right, of course. Oh, it's not good, too much suffering. It kills things in you. A doctor shouldn't have to worry about money. He shouldn't have to worry about anything except his job. And we can't allow outside forces or things or people to interfere with us. We can't. And if they do, we've got to buy them out. Even if we have to tear out our hearts to do it. I'm afraid I, I don't follow you. I'm sorry. So I guess that was a little bit off the track. Just something personal. Oh, yes. Dr. Ferguson? Yes? Dr. Finn sent this report down. Oh, yes. Thank you. Well, what does it say? Levine, it says that... You'd better read it yourself, doctor. Oh, God, I knew it. I knew it. I wish I could tell you how sorry I Tuberculosis. My poor Catherine. Oh, what are we going to do now? Oh, she'll, she'll come through all right. You'll see now. Perhaps if you took her to a drier climate... Maybe, maybe. That means giving up the little practice that I have. It means starting all over again. I don't know if we can do it. We're not young any longer. I don't know. Is there anything I can do, doctor? Nope. Thanks, Timmy. Who is it? Hello. Oh, oh, hello. Uh, what, uh... I came down for those notes. Oh, yeah, oh, yes, of course. I forgot, stupid of me. Let's see now. Uh, what was it, uh, Materia Medica? Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I had them here someplace. Oh, I hate to disturb you. That's all right. Pathology, histology, no. Well, no. it's too much trouble, I'll Materia just... Medica, here. There you are. Thanks. Not at all. I hope there's some help. Is... Is there anything wrong? What? 
anything wrong? Wrong? No, no, of course not. Are you sure Dr. Cunningham didn't... No. Because if it would mean anything, I'd go right down and tell them all, everybody, just what happened. No, it's not Cunningham. What is it, then? Oh, it's just... I don't... Don't mind me tonight. You work very hard, don't you? Work? Why, sure I work. What else is there but work and work? You know, Doctor, when I thought Dorothy was going to die, I got the feeling like a... Like... I can't put it into words. Ah, I know. I know that feeling. You, too? I've got it right now, Barbara. Now. I'm tired of work and blood and sweat and pain. The fellow in 341 is dead and Levine's wife is going to die. You begin to wonder what it's all about and why on earth does anything make any difference? Yes, that's the feeling. And you get so lonely. And you feel tomorrow it's me. And the only thing that matters is just being alive. Just being alive now, isn't it? Yes. You, you kids have a pretty tough time of it, don't you? Grind all day and lights out at 10 o'clock, huh? And only one night out till 12.30. I haven't taken mine in two months. There's just nobody. Nobody at all. You're a sweet kid, Bob. Am I? Yes. Yes. Oh, Bob. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, it's all right. I wanted you to kiss me. Please don't feel that I... I wanted you to. I don't mind. Really, I don't. It was my fault more than yours. You are sweet, Barbara. What... What are you going to do tonight? Well, I was going to study, but it's my night off. Then let's get out of here. Let's go someplace where we can forget we ever saw the inside of a hospital. I want to hear some music. I want to laugh for a change. I want to forget that there's pain and suffering and... Will, will you come with me? Oh, yes. All right, meet me outside the north entrance. I'll have a car. and Make it as fast as you can. I want to get out of here. What are you thinking about? What? Oh, nothing much. You're so quiet. You're not having a very good time, are you? Sure. Aren't you? Grand. I'm not very talkative. Oh, I don't mind. Just being here with you, I... <laughs> I guess I'm too talkative. You could do a lot better than me. There must be plenty of fellows at the hospital. No. <laughs> at least I haven't met them. But I've seen you so often. Worked right next to you. You didn't even know I existed, did you? Sure, I did. I'm glad you found out, though. <laughs> You're a funny kid. I guess you think I'm pretty fresh telling you this, but I don't care. It's the truth. Let's have another, shall we? Oh, I don't think I should. Oh, sure, sure. Hey, waiter. Waiter. Yes, sir. How about a couple more here? Yes, sir. Hello? I'm sorry, Dr. Ferguson isn't here tonight. St. George's Hospital. One moment, please. That's why I came back here tonight, to see you and to see George. He isn't in. I know, but I'm going to wait for him. And just what you want me to do, Laura? Advise him not to study? Not to spend a few years making himself... A few years? You say it so casually, as if it were nothing. It is nothing. A lifetime is nothing in the study of medicine. A good doctor must know how to... A good doctor must know how to cure people of disease and sickness. If he can do that, that's all he needs. Laura, you love George, don't you? Yes. And you want him to be happy? Well, of course I do. Why do you suppose I'm here now? Because I couldn't bear to think that I'd hurt him. But I know where his happiness lies, perhaps even better than he does. He wants to be a doctor, Laura. And he wants me. Oh, Hockey, I can make him happy. I know I can. If he goes into practice, we'll have some time to ourselves. Time to... Time to do nothing. Laura, you don't know what that boy's work means to him. But I do. No, you don't. You don't, Laura. What time is it? I don't know. Why? Don't you think we'd better go now, George? What for? We're not in a hurry. You came here to forget something. But you haven't forgotten it, have you? 
Oh, what's the difference? Oh, I'm sorry. You look so low and discouraged tonight. I thought if I went with you, I could help somehow. You really want to help me, don't you, Barbara? Oh, of course I do. If you'll only tell me how. Just sit tight, that's all, and don't pay too much attention to me. Let me pity myself a little. I like it. Oh, don't talk like that. Please don't. Hey, waiter, waiter. No, George, we're going back. Oh, no, don't be silly. The evening's just started. But it hasn't. It's over. You'll get in trouble if you stay. Please, darling, I... What? Please come, George. All right. Sure. I think that was a policeman back there on that side street. What of it? You're going awfully fast. We're in the city now, George. It's all right. Let him stop me. I'm a doctor. I'm hurrying back to the hospital to watch people oh, die. slow down, please. There's a man in the public ward screaming in pain. A little boy who'll never walk. He hasn't any legs. George, stop it. Stop They're it. They're waiting for me. I've got to help them. I've got to sit by their beds and hold them down while they writhe in torment. I've got Look to... Out! Barbara. Barbara, you okay, mister? Don't mind me. Well, watch out for her. Get her out of here. Easy. Easy, you fool. Barbara. Barbara. Are you all right? Look at me. Look at me, Barbara. Oh, God. Excuse me, Laura. Of course. Dr. Hochberg. Dr. Hochberg. Hello? Yes? Yes. Who? Miss Denning? Well, how did it happen? Well, never mind. Get the operating room ready at once. It's an emergency case. One of our own girls. A nurse? Yes. Hello? This is Dr. Hochberg. When Dr. Ferguson comes in, tell him... Oh, he is? Well, send him to the operating room right away. Emergency. George has just come in. You're putting him to work quickly enough? He'd want to do it. I said before that you didn't know what it meant to him. But perhaps you'd like to see for yourself. If you can stand it. What do you mean? Come to the operating room. Watch him work. Watch him take a bruised and broken body and make it human again. Well? All right. Why not? I'll get you a sterile cap and gown. Hello? Oh, back talking. I want a sterile cap and gown for Miss Hudson. Take it to the operating room. Towel. Yes, sir. Nurse. Where is she? Why don't they bring her in? They will in a minute. Did you see her yet? Yes, sir. A few minutes after you brought her in. How was she? Well, she's regained consciousness. She asked for you. She... All right, lay out the instruments. We must lose any time. Come in. Evening, George. Good evening, Dr. I... Laura. George, dear. What are you doing here? Well, Dr. Huckberg said I might... George! What's happened to your face? It's all cut. It's, it's nothing. On an automobile. We had an accident. Who? Who, George? It's all right. Dr. Hochberg, the girl, she's, she's pretty badly hurt. Concussion? Possible fracture. Laceration? Head, neck, and arms. It's pretty bad. The patient's here, Dr. Hochberg. Bring her in. Carefully, Miss Simpson. It's all right, Barbara. You'll be all right, dear. Over here. How is she? George. George. Yes, Barbara. What's happened to me? It's, it's nothing. I, I feel so funny. I hurt George. And I, I can't, I, I can't. Now, we, we're going to fix you up, Barbara. You'll be all right. You won't let them hurt me anymore? Of course not. Will you be there? George, darling, please be there. I'll be there. Don't feel bad. It wasn't your fault. I wanted you to kiss me. Come on. Come on. Put her on the table. Yes, sir. George, what did that girl mean? Laura, I'm awfully sorry. What did she mean? Don't touch me. You want to unsterilize my gown? Ferguson, we are waiting. We're ready, sir. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming. If you want to watch Miss Hudson, you'd better... No, thanks. I've had enough. I've had enough. Laura. Ferguson, are you ready? Yes, sir. I'm ready. Before 
applause for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. You are listening to KNX Los Angeles, the voice of Hollywood. Men in White, starring Spencer Tracy, Virginia Bruce, and Francis Farmer, continue shortly. Twelve years ago, a young lady whom I recognized as a teacher at the Hollywood School for Girls, where my two daughters were students, walked on my set at Paramount. I ventured to ask what new mischief those two DeMille kids had been up to. Oh, the girls are fine, I was told. I'm here to go to work. You see, Mr. DeMille, I've just been hired as your new wardrobe designer. So a school mom turned into one of Paramount's cleverest creators of costumes. Her name is one you've seen many times on the screen. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Edith Head. Thank you. You've been listening to a play about men in white, ladies and gentlemen. Here's something that may interest you about women in white. Women in white are very rarely seen in films because pure white is one of the most difficult colors to photograph. But in Jack Benny's new picture, College Holiday, you'll see a big dance number in which pure white is successfully screened. It's a, it's a dance that starts off with a Grecian ballet. That called for a background of white Grecian temples, white statues, warriors in white armor, and 60 girls in white wigs and immaculate white dresses. That we succeeded in filming this all-white sequence is due in no small measure to Lux Flakes. Every night, the costumes worn by Gracie Allen, Martha Ray, Mary Boland, along with those of the chorus, were laundered in Lux. Each morning, they appeared as immaculately white as the snow which we never see in Hollywood. And though they were washed at least a dozen times before the scene was finished, you can see them now in our wardrobe, looking just as lovely and new as the day the dressmakers finished them. We'll be using lots of Lux Flakes, too, in making our new film, Waikiki Wedding, in which Bing Crosby and Bob Burns are starred. Since it's late in Hawaii, white summery costumes will predominate. And incidentally, in this picture, for the first time in my life, I had to design a costume for a pig. I mean, a real pig. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Back to Men in White, starring Spencer Tracy, Virginia Bruce, and Francis Farmer. It's early the following morning. George Ferguson, his face drawn with care, is just entering Dr. Hochberg's office. Oh, come in, George. How's Miss Denny? Her fever's down a little. Good. I hear you watched the case all night. Well, that was the least I could do. What a mess I've got her into, the poor kid. Here, yeah, now, now, don't take it like that. She was such a pretty little thing. Now, she... what's going to become of her? She'll never see again, I know. Now, it. don't worry. We'll take care of her. We'll find something... I wasn't with... thinking of money. That's not going to help her much. What about her life? It's shot to bits. There's only one decent thing to do. I'm going to marry her if she'll have me. George, George, stop talking like an idiot. What about Laura? I'm going to marry that girl. What for? I have to take care of her, don't I? Oh, I see, I see. So you, you saved some money then, huh? Out of what? Then how are you going to help her? How are you going to take care of her? I'm going into practice. If you think you can provide for both of you by first starting practice, then you just don't know. I'll manage somehow. I'm not afraid of that. George, you saw Levine yesterday. You know he's practically starving. He asked me to lend him $20. I don't see what that has to do with me. You didn't know him six years ago. He wouldn't let me help him then. He was so sure, so confident, and better equipped for practice than you are. Possibly. But at least he loved Catherine. But you don't love this girl. It was an accident. And for that, you want to ruin yourself. Dr. And... Hochberg, please, it's no use. I've thought of all that. It doesn't make any difference. There's only one decent thing to do, and I'm going to do it. And I'm going into practice. If you do that, George, you're through. You're finished. All right, then I am. Why not? What good's a profession that can't give you bread and butter after you've sweated out ten years of your life on it? And if I can't make a go of practice, I'll find a job at something else. I won't starve. I'll always make a living. Dr. Hochberg. George, Dr. Hochberg. you're going to be sorry Dr. for this. Hochberg. Maybe. Dr. Hochberg. Hello, Dr. Hochberg. Yes. Yes? What? When? Prepare a hypo of caffeine. Adrenaline. Long needle. At once. Who is it? Do you want me? No, 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 no. You stay here. I'll be back in a few minutes. Hockey. Hockey, wait. I can't stop now, Laura. Go to my office. George is there. But I don't want to see him now. I came to see you. Well, you'd better speak to him. He's going to marry that girl. Oh. I'll be down as soon as I can, Laura. Dr. 
George. Oh, oh, come in, Laura. I just saw Hockey. He told you? Yes, but I don't believe it. It's not true. It is true, Laura. I'm going to marry her, and I'm going into practice. Funny, isn't it? Only yesterday I asked you to do that, and you refused. Cases are different. I've got to do it now. How long have you known this girl? Does that matter? I've ruined her life. You love her, don't you? I love you, Laura. Yes, I'm sure you do. I don't care whether you believe it or not. It just happens that I do. Let go of my arm. You're hurting me. I'm sorry. I don't understand this, George. What's it all about? It doesn't make sense. Where did you go last night? What did you do? We went to a roadhouse. I asked her to go. I'd had a rotten day yesterday. Things kept piling up until I thought I'd bust. This kid came to my room for some notes. She was sympathetic. and She was lonely herself. She's in love with you? She thinks she is. It's just a kid affair, that's all. But she understood. And I needed that last night. You and I quarreled and... I didn't want to give up working with Hochberg. I didn't want to give you up. I didn't know which way to turn. She was there? Yes. Still, you say you love me. If I hadn't, I'd have called quits yesterday. Told you I was going to work with Hochberg, whether you liked it or not, gone to Vienna alone. Well, why don't you go then? Go on and do it now if it's so important to you. I won't be around to distract you. Go on. You won't. You're going to marry a girl you say you don't care for. All right, make your beautiful gestures. Marry her. I'm going to. You think you're being brave and strong, I suppose. But you're not. You're a coward. You're doing it because it's the easiest way out. Because you're afraid people will say things about you. Because you've no backbone. Yes, Laura, you're right. I have no backbone when I almost let myself be talked out of a chance to work with hockey. And maybe to do something fine someday. But right now, I have no choice. I'm not doing this because I give a rap what anybody says or thinks. I'm doing it because that girl's life is smashed and I'm responsible. And I, I want to try and help pick up the pieces and put them together. Oh, Laura, don't. I knew how you felt about hockey, and I shouldn't have insisted. I've been selfish, but it was only because I loved you so much. And I still do. That's the way I am, George. I can't help it. George? Yes, doctor. Miss Denning, she wants to see you. Is there anything wrong? I am afraid so. That adrenaline I ordered was for her, George. You mean she... She's asking for you. You'd better go to her. Yes. Yes. Hockey, what's happened? Embolism. She's gone into a collapse. Does it mean... There's nothing we can do, Laura. Nothing. Oh, God. George... Yes. I asked them to send you to me. I... I didn't know. I wanted you to to be near me. Just for a a little while. You don't mind? Mind? I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid, George. But... If I could just hold your hand. Barbara... Oh, Barbara. Don't talk, darling. I can call you that now, can't I? There's so little time left. And I've loved you for so long. You didn't know. But I have, George. That's why you mustn't feel bad about anything. Barbara, is, is there something I could do? Stay here with me. A little while. Just a little while. Darling. George, dear. How is she, George? She's... She's dead. Oh, darling. Only a few hours ago, she was pleading with me for a chance to live. She was so young, she didn't want to die. Stop it, George. Stop torturing yourself, please. These things happen. It might have happened to anybody. Couldn't we have done something, Dr. Hochberg? I tried everything. Caffeine intravenously. Adrenaline directly into the heart. Useless. That little blood clot in the lung and... We're helpless. 
Forty years I've spent in medicine, and I couldn't help it. Then what's the use? What good is it all? Why go on? It takes everything from you, and when you need it most, it leaves you helpless. We don't know anything. We're only guessing, George. There isn't a man in medicine who hasn't said that and meant it for a minute. All of us, George. And you're right. We are groping. We are guessing. But at least our guesses today are closer than they were 20 years ago. And 20 years from now, they'll be still closer. That's what we are here for. There's so much to be done and so little time in which to do it. One life is never long enough. It isn't easy for any of us. But in the end, our reward is something richer than simply living. Maybe it's the kind of success that the world out there can't measure. Maybe it's a kind of glory, George. Yeah. Question as much as we will. When the test comes, we know. Don't we, George? Yes. Well, <clears throat> well I... I'll reduce that fracture at ten. Schedule the appendix at three. Yes, sir. Oh, darling, I'm so sorry. George, let's get away from here. Let's go someplace where we can talk this thing over quietly and sanely. No, Laura. This is where I belong. Yes. You're right. I've got to stay. I understand. Well, when you come back from Vienna, if hockey will let you off for a night, give me a ring. I'll be around. And maybe someday we'll get together anyway. We will. Won't we, George? Yes, yes, of course. I'll be waiting for you, George. I don't care how long it takes. I'll be here waiting. Dr. Ferguson? Dr. Ferguson? Dr. Ferguson? They're Dr. calling Ferguson. me. Dr. Ferguson? Dr. Ferguson? Yes. Work hard. I will. Goodbye, my darling. Hello. Ferguson talking. Yes. Yes. What's her temperature? Respiration. All right, keep your eye on her. Have an oxygen tank prepared and tell McDonald to stand by. I'll be there right away. Curtain falls on men in white. But Spencer Tracy, Virginia Bruce, and Francis Farmer will be with us again shortly. The Lux Radio Theater now presents a physician whose practice encompasses the world, Dr. Victor G. Heiser, world-famous hygienist. Dr. Heiser is president of the International Leprosy Association, author of important medical books, and of the national bestseller, An American Doctor's Odyssey. Once again, our stage extends across the continent. We take you now to New York City to introduce a great humanitarian. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Victor G. Heiser. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. I congratulate you and the Lux Radio Theater on your splendid productions and the great enjoyment they provide to so many. Man's lifespan has been doubled in the last half century. We have knowledge available to make an equally great gain in the future. Radio is one of the great hopes of science for speeding up the general use of its knowledge. The men in white, as in your play tonight, are engaged in repairing the damage disease causes. My efforts have been mainly directed at the prevention of disease. This mission has carried me 16 times around the globe and into more than 40 countries. Our greatest obstacles were ancient superstitions. For instance, in the Philippines, we found the natives believed boiled water was poisonous. When we finally drilled an artesian well, they wouldn't go near it. If God had intended us to drink water out of a hole drilled into the earth, they said, he would have put it there. Some of our work resembles a detective story. In Palestine, they were trying to stamp out plague. 
Dead rats have always been associated with plague, but they could find none. Finally, I suggested tearing down a wall near one deathbed. Well, there was a rat. We snooped around some more, and a neighboring blacksmith admitted seeing the most extraordinarily strange rats. We finally traced them to a refuse heap in a vacant lot. Underneath it were hundreds of rodents dead from plague. Searching further, we found a store with rice from Rangoon, the world's most notorious plague center. Well, there was the source of the plague. We quit being detectives then and set about being scientists to eradicate it. On Wednesday, I shall sail for Africa on another long expedition. There's no telling what we'll find this time. I hope that something of what I've said will help you realize the tremendous needs of man and the great satisfaction there is in fulfilling them. Also, you may understand more clearly why a doctor, in devoting himself to his career, is not losing his life, but gaining it a thousandfold. From Hollywood, Dr. Heiser, we send our thanks to you in New York. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our stars in alphabetical order. Miss Bruce, Miss Farmer, and Mr. Tracy. I have just two things on my mind, Mr. DeMille. First, I want to wish everyone a very happy new year. And second, I want to say this. Every Monday night, I've heard the stars get up here and say how much they enjoyed being on the Lux program. Well, now I know they weren't just being polite. It's been a grand experience, and many thanks. I surrender the microphone to my alphabetical neighbor, Miss Frances Farmer. As a comparative newcomer to Hollywood, Mr. DeMille, I'm afraid I'm not any source of news. I've worked rather hard these past months, but nothing could have pleased me more. It's meant the fulfillment of my earliest ambitions, a chance to act, to pictures, to the people who attend them, and to the Lux Radio Theater, my sincere thanks. And now, our man in white, Spencer Tracy. Thank you. I owe a lot to Hollywood, Mr. DeMille. But having spent so many years on the stage, I admit I've been lonesome more than once for the legitimate theater. Tonight, you've given me the opportunity to get back again behind the footlights, and I'm very grateful. But Men in White does a great deal more than satisfy an actor's ego. It's an enduring tribute to what I feel is the finest profession in the world. You hear a lot these days about commercialism. People wonder what's happened to the humanity and the sacrifice that glorified the past. It's still around us, in the men in white of your hometown and mine. Men whose sole objective in life is that we might be well. And I hope that tonight we have succeeded in reflecting upon the family physician a little of the honor which, along with our bills, we may have forgotten to pay him. Good night. Good night, Spencer. Good night, Virginia and Francis. Mr. Tracy, Miss Bruce, and Miss Farmer, our thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your announcer, Melville Ruick. Before Mr. DeMille returns with the announcement of next week's stars and play, may I say that Mr. Tracy and Miss Bruce appeared through courtesy of Metro Golden Mayor Studios, Miss Farmer and Mr. DeMille Paramount, Mr. Guilfoyle, RKO, and Mr. Silver's 20th Century Fox, where he was in charge of music for the new film, One in a Million. Miss Bruce will soon be seen in Universal's picture, Class Prophecy. And here's Mr. DeMille. My enthusiasm in looking forward to next week's program is one, ladies and gentlemen, I think you will share. For next Monday night, the Lux Radio Theater presents two of the finest performers in the film capital, Claudette Colbert and Fred McMurray. For each, it is a return engagement to our stage, and you will hear them in the same story in which they scored such a great success together on the screen, The Gilded Lily. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Claudette Colbert and Fred McMurray in The Gilded Lily. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. You are listening to KMX Los Angeles.